The World Cup of Hockey is the next major international tournament, and we believe that Nick Suzuki should be on the team. We'll be breaking down our reasons why, and we'll be looking at some other projections from different websites on this edition of Habs Digest. Hello, bonjour, ahoy, and welcome to today's different edition of Habs Digest, where we're going to dive into Nick Suzuki's case for Team Canada. I'm Josh Goss, alongside my co-host Jesse Poirier, and really quick before we get into the video, guys, if you like the video, even leave a comment or just subscribe to the channel. It helps us out more than you could ever imagine. We love the support so far, and we hope you guys are going to be sticking around for the long haul. Jesse, uh, this is a, sort of a Christmas special, but the World Juniors on the horizon. Team Canada is fresh in people's minds. These guys, you know, we want to represent our country. We want our country to do well. And the World Cup of Hockey, which was postponed due to COVID for a while in different situations, looks like it'll be happening in 2025. And we think Nick Suzuki has a great 24. case. 24. 24. Is it 24 now? Okay, there you go. Yeah. 2024, even sooner than I thought. And we think Nick Suzuki has a great case to make it. What are your uh, What are your thoughts about Nick Suzuki? And uh, let's just let's just get our opinions. I think he's going to make it what about you yeah i think he's trending upwards you know there's obviously really tight competition uh but i'd love to see him there i mean like you got to think that mcdavid and crosby are locks but just the way that suzuki just his way has been uh just transitioning like you got to think that he'll maybe to even get you know maybe that four seed and dare i even say that three c spot on team canada well, you wouldn't be the only one saying that. We're going to get into some projections from different websites as we go along in the video. Some people have him on the fourth line, some on the third, and some not at all. So we'll be talking about that. But yeah, Jesse, I think you're right. A young guy, right? He'll have some of the freshest legs on the squad. He is a leader. His chemistry with other players, it seems like he, he'll be able to fit on any line. Plus, his two-way versatility is very important in the international game when you can't just stick your best offensive players out there and, and win. Um, but let's get into some of these others. We, we've said, spoke our minds already. Suzuki, we want him on the team. We think he deserves to be there and we'll get into some more reasoning as we go along, but let's start off here with the daily face-off projection or project, projected lines for the world cup. Now, daily face-off is a great website where you can see current lines for teams. They have some great writers, including, uh, one of these lineups here was Frank Saravalli, a very well-known insider for the NHL. But let's get into these these lineups here, Jesse, and let's get our opinions on this. So this one here, we're looking more so at the center spot. Suzuki maybe could play wing. As you can see, some centers are playing wing here. But, uh, you know, they got McDavid, Point, Crosby as the main three centers, which, to be honest, I think that's fairly reasonable to have ahead of Suzuki. You know, you give Point the benefit of the doubt. Then they have Robert Thomas as the fourth line center, and Matthew Barzell as the spare, with Drake Batherson on the third line right wing. This was the first one I saw, Jesse, when I was looking into, you know, where would Suzuki fit? And I was like, let's see what some some professionals have to say. And to see Drake Batherson and even, like, Matthew Barzal on an international team, like, I don't know what your thoughts are on on them being ahead of Suzuki. Yeah, well, you know, Barzal's not having the greatest year. And, you know, uh, Robert Thomas either. Um, you know, essentially, I just think that, you know, Suzuki just offers way more of, like, for sure, Thomas has got a lot of points. He's got, what is it, 22 assists so far on the season eight goals you know so 30 30 points is pretty respectable but i think with that fourth line is for sure you want that defensive you know responsibility i think that nick suzuki is even better than robert thomas in that way just because he's so intelligent but you also you need that goal scoring threat on just all the lines you know and i believe that suzuki yeah he can set up people you know he's in a great assist man as well but he's got a great shot i just having a little bit more of that goal scoring threat is definitely a reason why I'd opt them there over Barzell or Thomas. Yeah, same here. And, you know, one thing we've seen, if you go look at any article talking about the selection process for Team Canada, a uh, common theme over the years is that they look for fit, they look for team chemistry more than they look for just the best offensive players. While Suzuki is still one of the better offensive players, Canadian offensive players in the league, He's the captain of his team. He's a leader. He has great chemistry with anyone in the locker room, plus his elite two-way ability, plus his playmaking and his ability to snipe a shot. It feels like he's sort of, you know, jack of all trades on this team and, and good at all of them, not even master of none. He's, he's a master at a lot of them too. So I think you the ability to put him on pretty much any line, even potentially as a winger, I think is, is like not taken into account enough by maybe some people. And again, this isn't just for this year. We're projecting like next year, a year and a half, two years yeah. down the road here where Nick Suzuki, his, his curve right now is going up and up and up. Yes. We'll have to see how much he develops over the course of the next season, season and a half before they make the final selection process for this team. But I feel like in that time, for sure, he'll be ahead of these guys. And let's get into the other daily face-off one here. 
This one I think is maybe a bit more reasonable, but again, Connor McDavid, Braden Point, Sidney Crosby, like those top three lines, sure. I mean, it's hard to argue with those guys. They got Kadri on the second line wing, but then you look and they have John Tavares, Robert Thomas again, and Anthony Sorelli. Now, f- full disclosure, the, both these lineups here, if you read the article and you go down later, both these uh, insiders said that they considered Nick Suzuki, which is awesome. But I'm wondering how you consider Nick Suzuki when you have the likes of Anthony Sorelli on that fourth line wing. Is it really just like, oh, Sorelli is great. He can fit into any lineup. I think Suzuki has that same ability, no? Yeah, no, absolutely. I was, I would definitely, definitely put, and there's many different reasons as well. And as you mentioned as well, it's like Nick Suzuki is a guy that you can really stick on that penalty kill, which, you know, when you're going to be playing against great players and all the top units from other teams is you're definitely going to want a guy like Nick Suzuki in your face off dot, you know, taking, uh, killing those penalties for you. So I think, you know, many different reasons. That's another big reason why I'd have a uh, number 14 in there. Yeah, so, I mean, we've made it clear. We want 3C, 4C. Uh, Jesse, what's your opinion on Suzuki? Like, what do you think would make Suzuki that kind of 3C guy over someone like Braden? Do you think, Braden Point, do you think it should be Crosby McDavid as the top two centers? Do you think, like, it's feasible that we'll see Suzuki at that three spot ahead of a guy like Point? Well, to the point that you made, Josh, is exactly for the reason I could see it because he's trending very much upwards. You know, in Braden Point, he's an amazing player. I think at this point in time, if myself when I'm kind of penciling it in making my roster I do have Braden Point at that 3C at this point in time I think that you just need to give him the benefit of the doubt like you mentioned with you know multiple Stanley Cup Mm -hmm. wins everything else Um, you know but Nick Suzuki isn't too far behind even statistically speaking so far this year and just projecting where that's going it's just you know Nick Suzuki is taking such tremendous leaps and bounds and such you know, some of the biggest, along with Cole Caulfield, out of any players we've seen so far in the NHL. So I think where it's going to line up and the people actually, you know, making the decisions for this team are definitely going to be seeing what Nick Suzuki is taking that, what he's doing at that time, definitely going to take that into account very seriously. Yeah, I think so too. I think you're bang on with all that. I think he's, I think he's going to gear towards this. I think it'd be awesome, an awesome goal for him to work towards. His curve, like we said, is very steep right now. He's performing at a very high level and we hope to see that continue. Um, Let's get into the, the Jesse, I know we spoke about these projections, but this projection coming up was the hockey writers, com. This projection made me a little upset. And you guys are going to see why in a second. Like, in those first two lineups, yeah, we had some disagreements about the likes of Robert Thomas, Drake Batherson, Anthony Sorelli, sure. But, like, Matt Duchesne, yeah, he's good, but, like, Sam Reinhardt as the... Sam Reinhardt ahead of Nick Suzuki at this point? Like, no, I don't think so yet. Like, and this projection isn't from like two years ago. This is from this year, like just a couple months ago. And, and I can, and Ryan O'Reilly is the two C like, yeah, Ryan O'Reilly, great two way player as well. But like the problem with this article is like the first two, they mentioned like they considered Nick Suzuki, which is like fair enough. Like, again, he's young. I can understand why people don't give him the benefit of the doubt, but how do you not even mention Suzuki's name when you're doing a projection? If you're at the hockey writers team and you pencil in Sam Reinhardt for sure as that 13th forward. Um, I disagree strongly with this one. I think that in that lineup, I think Suzuki should easily be maybe even a fourth-line center or a fourth-line winger. I, what, what do you think about Sam Reinhardt over Nick Suzuki? Yeah, no, I definitely know there. And yeah. even, you know, with Ryan O'Reilly, like, you know, with all due respect, we know that he's won a Stanley Cup, but he is having a very rough year. You know, he's definitely not trending in the right direction, you know, for uh, for the World Cup of Hockey. And, you know, with Kadri is Suzuki has more points on the season even than Kadri right now. And I think so he's offering more offensively. I think he can offer more defensively. Yeah, for sure. I think of just, you know, how he impacts the game in overall. I just think his overall hockey IQ is super underrated. This is the type of player that you want under really high pressure circumstances you know nick suzuki's a cool customer you know he's going to benefit your team and he's definitely not going to hurt you in any type of way just because he's just way too smart of a player and he's just shown that time and time again so i would really like to start seeing our montreal players uh starting to get some of the respect that they deserve i think so too and uh, like i think kadri if you're going to put him on team canada i would almost say he would thrive more in a winger position on this team in particular. We've seen him thrive with amazing line mates, but team Canada has so many good centers. We saw in the, in the previous one, they had Kadri up as high as the second line, which I think maybe arguably would be a better fit for him. 
I think Suzuki is a much better fit at center for this team as, as a guy who has two-way ability plus the ability on the PK. So yeah, that, that one from the hockey writers, I was just, uh, and again, these aren't like very recent, but they're all within 2022. And the final one, Bleacher Report, was actually just in October. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, actually, we'll get into it now. Why not? The Bleacher Report projection. So like, yeah, some of these aren't taking into account this season so far. But I, and I think maybe the problem is some people were underestimating Nick Suzuki's development curve. Even though we saw Jesse as Habs fans, we knew he was going to be something special. Two-way offensive defensively, and he's putting up crazy points. Um, but maybe these guys didn't have him as high as we did. But Bleacher Report did. Bleacher Report has him on the third forward line b between Pierre-Luc Dubois, which I don't even think he should be in the, you know, in the top four lines. But, well, whatever. But Mitch Marner. And I like this picture they use, Suzuki with Marner potentially on the line. What are your thoughts on that line, Jesse? Like, just Suzuki maybe with Marner on the wing. And I'm glad that Bleacher Report gave Suzuki the respect he deserves because that was written uh, just a little bit into the season when Nick Suzuki was hot, so they were riding that high. And I think this is a, maybe even a little more realistic than the first few lineups we've looked at. Yeah, they would actually be a really good duo together because, you know, Mitch Marker, Mitch Marner, he's so sneaky, so creative in the offensive zone, and Nick Suzuki is the same way, right? Like, just imagine the opportunities. You can definitely see Mitch Marner, you know, maybe in a little bit more of a shooting type of role or they could really feed, you know, of each other, of, you know, kind of feeding each other and also getting the opportunity for the shots as well. I could see them just working tremendously well in the offensive zone. I'd love to see them on a, on a power play together. But, yeah, I think, like, with Patrice Bergeron probably not making this year's or our next uh, Team Canada, is I think that they're going to want to replace Patrice Bergeron, Bergeron with like another similar type of player because this is the type of player that's allowed us to win our gold medals, like a very important part of our success in the past. And I think that our management's definitely going to recognize that. You have the closest thing in the NHL to Patrice Bergeron is Nick Suzuki. Mm -hmm. You know, clearly. So for me, it's such a logical thing that they would want to replace that with uh, with this type of player. Yeah, it makes a ton of sense to me. It's kind of interesting because Suzuki and Marner are very similar in a lot of ways. Both guys who have that goal scoring touch, but primarily look to set up their teammates. I think there'd be a really cool dynamic with them on the line with someone other than Pierre-Luc Dubois on the left wing. <laughs> yeah, but uh, <laughs> but no, you're right, Jesse. That kind of defensive center is kind of what Team Canada needs. And I feel like in a tournament like that, where Suzuki is surrounded by... Team Canada has like some of the best goal scorers, point getters in the world. We probably have the most stacked offensive lineup. So it's a team where Nick Suzuki may not need to really show his full offensive potential. And like with Montreal, he has such a high offensive and defensive load. We've seen that like last year when he had to like put the team on his back every night, his defensive numbers trailed a little bit. This year, now that he's getting a little more help from the likes of Doc and Caulfield, he's getting better defensive numbers. So on Team Canada, where he doesn't really need to always show his offensive prowess, he's probably not going to be on the power play, let's be honest, where he can be on the penalty kill and be an elite defensive center. I mean, what are your thoughts on him maybe transitioning to just a full-on defensive role for Team Canada? Do you think that's a, a reasonable assumption to make about what he could do? Well, yeah, like you definitely have to go uh, just with the overall makeup of the lineup. But for sure, he would probably trend uh, more in that direction. But again, just speaking to our points of why I would pick him over the likes of Robert Thomas, uh, Nazem Kadri, Ryan O'Reilly is that, you know, for sure, he would be able to play better defense, you know, as good or better defense than all of them. And I would definitely argue better than all of them while also offering a better offensive output, which statistically speaking, he's also shown this season. So it's, you're getting the best of both worlds. Like, yes, he would be there, but, you know, it's you can definitely see him being the type of player that's kind of that unsung hero getting a big goal at a time, right? Because, you know, those third and fourth lines are definitely going to have to contribute as well. It's going to be all hands on deck, and I couldn't think of a better player to have in that type of role than Nick Suzuki. No, me neither. I think you're right on with that. And like we said, Team Canada is looking for fit. They're looking for chemistry and what player would you rather have on your roster than someone who can play pretty much every position, every special teams in the book and excel at every single one of them? Uh, Jesse, this was an interesting look uh, at these lineups. I think Bleacher Report was probably my favorite. Uh, what about you? What was your favorite lineup out of these? That one too? <laughs> uh, well, you know, I did. I like Daily Faceoff just because yeah. I thought they got three out of four right, True. you know, with Point, Connor. And, and Crosby and everything else like that. You know, they, they didn't have Suzuki all the same. I don't know. I think we have they to do our own to just kind of get it right. That's true, you know, to get it just right. But it'll be funny. I think we should definitely do a video in the future just as we're getting a little bit closer just to see how this is all stacking up. 
of course, the situation is very fluid, so it's going to be a lot of fun to cover. It's going to be a ton of fun. And uh, speaking to Team Canada, we got the World Juniors right around the corner. We're ready to prepare some videos for you guys on all those games. So we want Team Canada, you know, we want you guys to prepare for Team Canada, right? This video is sort of a lead in, get you guys, get you guys proud of your country. I know we have a lot of viewers from Slovakia and some from the States, and but uh, no, this this one's about Canada. So uh, we're, we're really excited to see how Nick Suzuki develops and how this team might look when the World Cup of Hockey comes around and uh, might be played in Europe and Canada. One of the one of the coolest tournaments I think we'll ever see. So I'm super excited. Jesse, I know you are. And I can't wait to see what happens. But that'll do it for this edition of Habs Digest. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Like, comment, do anything you can to support us. You guys have been blowing us away with all the support on our recent videos. And we can't thank you guys enough for all the support. And we love making all these videos, all this content for you guys. I'm Josh Goss for my co-host, Jesse Poirier. We'll catch you in the next one.